So it's another episode of Maker Monday and I'm Sean and this is Bernd, a sysadmin at Pesla. And today we are going to put together a temperature logger for our smart home. Bernd, do you want to tell us a little bit about the functionality that we've got planned for a temperature logger and why we need it? Yeah, um, we want to build a temperature logger which uh, logs temperature, uh, air pressure, humidity and uh, it also reports his battery. In the last episode we have uh, used a Ledunia stick because it's super easy, it's uh, like this one. But all these uh, devices have voltage regulator, serial, serial controllers mm -hmm. and so on. And all this uh, consumes a lot of energy. So we want to run as long as possible on a battery. So we will take one of these little guys. Um, without all the controllers and so on. I think with this version we will get a battery life from 6 to 12 months. Okay. Uh, with this one we get 3 weeks or 4 weeks. So Okay, a huge difference. Uh, yeah, so I think we should do this work. It's a lot of work, but we should do this for the, for the best logger we can get. Uh, first, we have to solder the ESP32 on this uh, tiny board. Mm -hmm. So we have to fix it a little bit with yeah, take some tape or something. So MacGyver style. Yeah. So we have to take a look that all connections here are lined up mm -hmm. perfectly. It's a no no nice work, but you have to do it. Yeah, it's interesting that we're using an ESP. Uh, chip for the controller because uh, on episode 2, on Make a Monday episode 2, someone actually asked whether we'd be using, what, what chip did they ask about if uh, we would use the... the ESPs, I think the 8266, but uh, yeah, we have used one in the last episode in yeah. Ledunia and this is a newer version with a dual core CPU. So the answer is yes, we will use ESP chips. And yeah, this one has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Okay. everything on the yeah. single chip, it's really cool. It's lined up okay, so pan it in here. In my helping hand. Yeah, and this is a soldering fan my colleague Björn has built from some ATI graphic cards cooler. That's pretty cool. So uh, let's give it a try, I've never used it before. Yeah. So, yeah. Very nice. With filtering and everything. Yeah, cool. Um, heat it up a little bit. Don't use too much solder wire, so, so get cross connections. So, yeah, heat it up and it will flow in. You will see it when it's great. Right. So, go on with the next one. So, you don't need really much, so it's really short. Okay, first row is done so we can remove the tape. Looks okay. <laughs> and the next side. <laughs> right. We are finished. Looks not perfect, but I think it's okay, no short circuit. This is the most important thing. Okay, um, the next step is we need to solder in the pin headers. This is much easier, they are really big. <laughs> looks good. Yeah, it looks good for me too, so. With this part we are finished. Let's come to the next part of soldering. Uh, we have to solder a PCB for our temperature logger. Mm -hmm. I've already prepared some steps in um, different sizes. Um, I've made a plan right. how to do this. Yeah, so. you can get software for this, but I like the paper, so yes. it's a lot more easy, I think. So. 
this point uh, represents the pins of the controller. Yeah. Um, yeah, here's the uh, uh, capacitors and so on. So this one I've already made here. Okay. Yeah, these lines. I hope you, uh, you can see it on the camera. So this one is done. These three are missing. Okay. So we have to do them now. The easiest way is to um, find a point to connect these wires. So cut a little bit. So. Uh, First we count, yeah. Um, we have here, this edge is this one, so okay. we get uh, down here and here, so this is the height, right. and here is the connection. Okay. Yeah, this one is, this one is here, and this one should be connected, okay. so we start here. Side one point. So now we can solder in this. We now can take a little screwdriver, so we, we bend it here mm -hmm. around this hole. So and then cut it off. So on, on this point later the controller pins come through and we can solder all together. So now again we count and so on. So one, two, three, four is the corner. So two, three, this one we solder. So it's fixed. And then we take the screwdriver on the corner and bend it down. So then the next point and so on and so on. You can set every uh, soldering point, but it's not necessary. So this this point here. Yeah. As this here, so one, two, three, four is for connection, so we take the fifth for fixing it. Okay. So from this one, one, two, three, four, it's fifth, we take this one. Okay. And for the next one, we have connection, so we take the screwdriver and Bend it a little bit around. We cut it. Okay, that's all. Okay, we do that for each of those. Yes. We have to do this for this line and this line. So now the counting is easier because yeah, you just um, have to put it next to it. We know the points. This one, and this one, and this one, and we have three lines, so we can do them all. Okay, Sean, uh, we have finished the PCB and the ESP. Okay. So let them bring together. Uh, we need some uh, additional parts here. So we have uh, two capacitors right. for the power. We need uh, to pull up resistors on the data lanes mm -hmm. and um, some pin headers for flashing. So I think we can uh, start with the pin header, that's the easiest part. So we use four from this. So now we have, uh, we have this uh, 
uh, lanes and um, pull in here the parts we want to use. So now you can see here the wires connect to the pins and now we solder it together. So okay. this is now a lot, a lot easier than this, this small, small micro. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's not easier when the camera looks to your soldering. So <laughs> yeah, let's do this here. Uh, heat it up. Okay, so the next is um, the capacitors, doesn't matter. So we have a um, 10 nanofarad for the CPU. So this one uh, gets in here. So we have a negative and a positive side. Mm -hmm. This one is the positive, so use it right. <laughs> Get it right, folks. Yeah, okay. The easiest way is uh, to put it in and bend it out a little bit so they sit in here. You can also use this one. The second one is a yeah, 10 nano. So we put it in, take a look on my, on my drawing here. It's for the temperature sensor. Okay. Bend it out. And it's all the same every time. <laughs> and salt it in. This is the temperature sensor. We have two data lines uh, and power. Okay. So it get in here on the bottom. And you said that one was from Bosch? Yes. There are a lot of others out there, but I think the Bosch are the best. Okay. Nobody sees that, huh? No. <laughs> no one. Let's use the ESP. So the ESP one gets out. here. So we have connect these two, these and the three. So okay. uh, we don't have to solder in all pins, only the pawn, uh, pins we need. Okay. The last one is um, the resistance here. So we need one resistor on each data line. So on this line and on this line. And we need a connection to the power line. So one feet to the data line and one to the power line. Bend it a little bit. And from the second data line also. So the last, no, not the really last, but one of the last is, I call it uh, ninja cabling. If uh, right. we need 
for flashing, we need an additional power line here. Mm -hmm. Could, uh, we, we, we had to cross the other line, so it takes some with insulation. Okay. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it works. That's what you mean by ninja cabling. Yeah. <laughs> Can't always be textbook cabling, folks. Okay, um, now we are finished. Right. One last we need. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you, Ben. Okay, the really last is the battery. Of course. How will that? So this one is the positive line. So now we are finished. Mm -hmm. So you see, we have our full board with the temperature sensor, the resistors, the capacitors all on board. Mm -hmm. And now we can start with the software. Okay, we can move on to the next step. That was the first part of our temperature logger episode. Join us next time for when we flash the software and integrate the temperature logger into Home Assistant. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell so that you're notified when the next episode comes out. See you then.